All right, welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. Um, what we got here is these are the top adjusting plates for the elevation mechanism of the etching press. Um, and they're big, thick um, steel burnouts here, okay? And we get, I had them ground flat, and we're gonna poke some holes in them. So here's the, uh, here's the drawing. It shows uh, kind of an elevation and a plan view here. Um, basically, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to put some holes in this, and um, for some of this ancillary uh, lifting gear here. So I'm not going to yap about this because we'll be getting to this soon enough. Um, so now the trick here, the trick here is that these are just rough flame cut, right? And uh, what I want to do is I want to establish. A couple of axes here to to kind of work off of. So um, I'm splitting the the material that's present. You know, uh, I'm maximizing the material that's present. I guess is what I'm saying. Um, so we'll establish some center lines that are in the middle of this material, and then we'll kind of work outwards from that. So uh, it's kind of a technique for working on castings is you know you have a bunch of uh, funny edges and you have to uh, you know establish some datums uh, to work off of uh, that aren't necessarily on the outside edges okay so uh, let's get started All right, so we're over here in the mill. Um, so we want to set this thing up, but uh, there's a couple ways we can do this here. And remember I was saying that we have kind of a rough uh, profile on this thing, right? And we want to kind of uh, maximize the excess material and uh, centralize everything. So we could kind of put it the, the same way I laid it out and uh, do something like this. Um, and come up against there but what I really need to do is I have a little excess material here because I can see two lines two scribe lines so I really want to be able to kind of um, rotate this slightly right to uh, <clears throat> excuse me um, to get into all these points in line okay so we're gonna do it a little bit differently here um, so normally what you would do is you you know you'd strip the mill off of the uh, off of the machine and then put this down on the table and hold it down with toe clamps, right? That would be the typical way to allow you to uh, uh, to align it. Um, also, these edges uh, are, I'm pretty sure are not square with this ground surface. We have two nice parallel surfaces this way, right? But these are not perpendicular to those, so it's a flame cut edge, so it's not going to be perpendicular. Um, so we're actually, uh, you know, I always hate pulling the vise off, so I try to get clever and uh, not do that. So uh, let's pull out the mini pallet and get this set up on the mini pallet, because that will work. 
All right, I'm ready to go here. So first off, let's. Uh, I think what we're gonna do. Oops. Yeah, it helps if you grab two uh, two parallels in there, uh, Mr. Wizard. Actually, I think I got one there. Have well, it screw you up. So let's get it off of the surface to start with. Okay. Um, and then I'm just gonna use a couple of screws that are stuck in the uh, in a couple of the mini pallet holes here and what these are these are just to give me some basic alignment okay uh, or basic parallelism with uh, the edge of the the mini pallet okay all right let's do that okay and then um, we we'll use uh, we use cant twists here to hold this down and we can add some mini pallet clamps too but we're just drilling through this way okay so uh, uh, we're not pushing sideways uh, with an end mill so the forces are, are kind of low um, in trying to shift it sideways so let's get another one here that. All right, so the first thing we'll do, all right, get a little pointer here. I got a little uh, little sharpened pointer here. I'm just gonna pick up the center. I'm not doing anything. Let's come down. I'm just gonna get my magnifier because I can't see a damn thing here. <clears throat> Centered that way, and centered that way. That looks pretty good. Okay, so let's zero that. Zero the Y, because that's that's what we're we want to align to. We're gonna go down here and have a look at this scribe line down here. See what we got. All right, that looks pretty tasty there. So I'm gonna tighten this one up a little more. And that, well, if we have to move it, that'll be our pivot there, so. Come down here and take a look. Okay, this one's off a little bit. I wanna, I wanna move this one. I'm gonna take that, that one off. I'm gonna get my instrument of adjustment here. Oops, better take that out there, huh? It's not gonna help. You know, it's you know it's probably fine without uh, doing this kind of fussy alignment. But hey, while you're here, just do it, right? Doesn't take that long. All right, this looks pretty good. All right, so I'm happy with this. Uh, with. Uh, the, this alignment here, okay? So now we're gonna come back and uh, zero up on that and uh, and then set the X zero because we're gonna work we're gonna work off of the uh, off of the center line here. Okay, so we got zero zero now, so we're pretty happy. Uh, I'm gonna add a couple more clamps on this just because I'm a chicken and um, then uh, we'll poke some holes. So I don't think anybody's gonna doubt this, uh, the mighty 1032 anymore, right? All right. And then I'm gonna put another one on diagonally from that one, so. All right, so we're using uh, our annular cutters uh, to make these holes, because they make a nice straight hole. Um, 
and these have these are hollow and they're like that so that's why they call them annular cutters so it produces a, a weird looking slug um, this is from the first hole here so that's kind of the center bit that comes out of that not this one but this one here so you know with a normal drill bit all that would get converted into chips right so you get a the they call it the power saver slug or something like that I don't, I don't remember what they call it but uh, it saves energy because you have a cutting speed here um, as where a drill bit at the center the cutting speed is actually zero so these are more efficient uh, and these produce very accurate holes and um, not that we need that in this case but uh, it's a quick way to get uh, a quick way to get holes we'll go ahead and uh, pop one here make sure I'm in the right spot and here we go okay that's it so that's See if I can get that out of there. Oop, there it goes. And there's a Mr. Sluggo. Oop, that won't work. There. Look centered. That's <laughs> something right. without blocking the camera here. Alright, sorry, you gotta block the camera for a sec. Alright. So we're we're just sneaking up on it so we're just gonna use the calipers real quick. Alright, 1.406. So we got a uh, hundred thousandths to go. For these uh, finish passes, I'm going to slow the feed rate down. I'm going to throw it, uh, slow it down to three thousandths per rev uh, for the finish.
Okay, so 45,000 is left. Also, I'm going to switch to uh, I'm going to switch to oily oil to get a, a, a nicer finish. Uh, start working on the finish on the bore. Okay, let's go. So we're going to do our setup here for uh, surfacing uh, these shoulders here. Uh, these are just flame cut and we want them perpendicular with this ground surface. Um, and we also want to maintain some symmetry so we're going to machine them off of these holes as our reference. So we're going to stick a couple of dowel pin or uh, gauge pins in there. Um, and then um, I have a stop set for the center. I'm just going to put this pin in there. All right, let's drop her in. Okay, now you see it, it rocks still, so uh, we're going to stick uh, parallels under the pins. So, oops, so I got a reference. And I got a couple little ones for the back. Like so. And then I can still clamp. That okay, make sure everything's there. Pop this out. You see, I got to stop here. I come up against that because I have to reference a shoulder here. Okay, all right, parallels are under. Let's give it a little push down and snug her up. Okay, okay, Whew. so we're using this uh, inch and a half uh, Cryosera uh, Surmet. Uh, inserted cutter. Uh, this thing leaves a really nice finish on steel, which you'll see in a minute. 
So uh, we're just gonna go to lease cleanup, which looks like it's about you know twenty five or thirty thousand until they clean up nicely uh, on both sides. Uh, remember, we're trying to be sim uh, symmetric about these holes here. So we're gonna flip it over and uh, do the other side. So we want to center up on all that. All right, so I thought you guys would like to see this uh, in context to the uh, assembly that we're moving towards here. So uh, there's a center rotating shaft that comes up through here, um, and this worm gear is uh, connected to that. And uh, this is the worm that actually has a shaft running through it this way across to the other side of the machine. And uh, this rotates and uh, and rotates the worm and lifts and lowers the, uh, or raises and lowers the upper roll. Okay, so we're gonna drill and tap some holes uh, in the sides of this, so we're still set up over there, so we're gonna go back. Um, for those of you guys that, uh, this is a Ceratip MTP-90-150-75 W, Ceratip. Uh, they're a little bit hard to find. Uh, I don't think they, I don't know if they still make them anymore. I've had this about <laughs> um, maybe 30 years or 25 years, something like that. Maybe not 30 years, but 25 years. Um, it works great. And it uses these uh, TPG 322 uh, Cermet inserts and uh, it just kicks Bob's, your uncle's butt. So uh, anyway, uh, let's go drill and tap these holes and get this mounted up and uh, let's go. All right, so we get the, uh, um, we're gonna drill and tap a couple of holes over here, but what I wanna do is pick up the center of this first. And this is a, a good example of uh, um, why I made this particular edge finder here with the long neck on it. Okay, the, the uh, hummingbird, that's what we're calling it. So uh, anyway, here's the standard one. And uh, when you put this up in here, and you, you try to come down and uh, get at the side of that. Uh, uh, the chuck's getting really, really close there. Now, of course, I can hang this out real far, but that isn't uh, uh, very optimal either, right? So, hey, go ahead and make yourself an edge finder, right? Now you got a long one, and we can kind of use it per normal. I'm halfway there. Okay. Third. And half of that. Three quarter, right?
Okay, so here's uh, here's what we're making. Um, it's a kind of a decorative washer uh, for the top of the etching press. And this is a sample part. And the reason I did a, a little sample part was because I ground a, uh, a special tool bit that has uh, the angle and this little corner radius in it in, in one shot there. Now, there's nothing particularly special about this tool bit. It's, you know, it's just high speed and uh, uh, ground at the correct angle of uh, this slope here and then with just kind of an eyeball radius at the end there. This radius isn't, isn't important to me other than it's just broken, okay? Uh, the angle was, was what was kind of the important part and that was easy to get with a, um, with a uh, Adam Booth uh, style, uh, um, you know, shortened uh, protractor. This is great for doing little tool bits and stuff like that. Adam uh, showed one of these on his channel and uh, I had an extra one so I immediately lopped off the leg of that and it's great for, for little angles on tool bits and stuff. So, okay. so we're going to go ahead and uh, try that and the uh, actual target material is brass and uh, let's see if I remember how to, uh, how to operate a, uh, one of these chucks with four jaws on it and we'll go from there. more. Alright, pretty good. I'm not going to win any contest, but uh, I think this thing's got a little, a little lumpy bumpy in it. Alright, that's pretty good. Alright. I know there's a bunch of guys out there going, why did he chamfer the heck out of the inside of that? Well, the reason is, is there's a big fillet on this fastener here, and I want it to 
sit down nice, okay? So that it looks. Oops, well, let's see. It sits down nice and nice and purty, okay? Anyway, that's the uh, decorative washer there that this kind of you know gives a little elevation change you know and breaks up this uh, big flat surface a little bit visually right uh, and they'll be you know it's contrasting materials too this will be painted and, uh, and then this will just be bare uh, bare breast so you get these contrasting materials too working together